Good afternoon and a very, very warm welcome to this parish church of St. Petrock as we all meet together with our ecumenical partners to sign a, a, a document of intent. So it's a great joy to have you all here today. I think you probably all just about seated, but it's good. And um, just a few things before our service starts. In the event of a thunderstorm, lightning, uh, earthquake, doesn't go on fire, uh, then the exits are right in front of you, that's right, that's, behind, that's right behind you in fact, the main door, the main door you came in, and also uh, to my left, so there's three exits, but I, I don't think we'll need enough today. And then also to say, uh, those of you who are of a nervous disposition, and during the last hymn, there will be some rather loud party poppers. <laughs> so do be aware of that. But welcome, and uh, we'll just have a few moments of silence, and then, and then the choir can sing, be still. First two verses, would you please be seated? Oh, okay. And then you're joining with the last verse.
be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yes. There is one body and one spirit. There is one Lord, which you are called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One Lord and Father of all. My friends. On behalf of the Presidents of Churches Together in Cornwall, may I give a very warm welcome to you on this historic occasion, a service of thanksgiving and prayer for the unity of the Church. Thank you for coming, and thank you to all the people who have put this service together and have made the arrangements. I believe it's been a bit like a military operation. It's wonderful that we have the boys and girls from St. Petrick's School and our civic dignitaries as well as our national leaders. This is a day when our Lord smiles upon us and after this service may he continue to smile as we Christians live out together in love and unity what we pledge today. In the presence of the God and Father of us all, we meet together with one accord from our various churches. We give thanks for the spiritual unity which is already ours as members of the body of Christ. We pray that this unity may, by God's grace, become a visible unity, so that his church in every place may demonstrate the healing power of the gospel and be an instrument of his peace in the life of the world. As a sign of the unity that we enjoy and the unity that we seek, five member churches will today sign a declaration of intent, recognising the special opportunities open to them to work together more closely in life and mission, in witness and service. The other member churches will undertake to honour and pray for this initiative by signing a letter of companionship and support. As we celebrate this great work that God is working amongst us, let us offer ourselves afresh to him that together we may fulfil his purposes of love. <laughs> Gracious God, lover of all, you call us to be one family in Christ your Son, one in the baptism that we share, and one in the communion of his spirit. Help us to grow in love for one another and come to the full maturity of the body of Christ through the same Christ our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
gives us water welling up for eternal life. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Lord, give us this water and we shall thirst no more. Praise God who made heaven and earth. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your gift of water in creation, for your spirit sweeping over the waters, bringing light and life, for your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, baptised in the River Jordan. We bless you for your new creation, brought to birth by water and the Spirit, and for your grace, given to us, your children, washing away our sins. May your holy and life-giving Spirit move upon these waters. Restore thou then the beauty of your creation, and bring us all to new birth in the family of your church. Drown the sin of our divisions in the waters of your grace. Anoint your children with the spirit of unity from on high, and make us one with Christ, in the freedom of your kingdom. For all might, majesty, dominion and power are yours, now and forever. Amen. God of truth, you are faithful to the covenant you have made with us. Look in mercy on your people. From all our sins, O Lord, wash us and we shall be clean. We have broken the pledges of our baptism and failed to be your disciples. From all our sins, O Lord, wash, wash us and we shall be clean. Though we are saved by Christ and dead to sin through the deep waters of death, we have not witnessed to his grace by our manner of life. From all our sins, O Lord, wash, wash us and we shall be clean. We have shown indifference to those in need and have been afraid to stand up for justice and truth. From all our sins, O oh Lord, wash, wash us and we shall be clean. We have been slow to forgive and have failed to remember your repeated forgiveness of our sins. From all our sins, O oh Lord, wash us and we shall be clean. We have failed to walk in the ways of peace and unity and have turned the wonder of our diversity into the bitterness of division. From all our sins, O oh Lord, wash us and we shall be clean. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Come, says the Spirit and the Bride, come, you who are thirsty, receive the water of life, the free gift to all who desire it. <laughs> <laughs>
Christ who made all things to transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly Lord, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day. Recording your tears, I long to see you, so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now, I am sure, lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel relying on the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Saviour Christ Jesus, who abolished death, and brought life and immortality to light through the Gospel. For this Gospel I was appointed a herald, and an apostle, and a teacher, and for this reason I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. This is the word of the Lord. Be 
I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And now our feet are standing within your gates of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, built as a city that is of unity in itself. The the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as it is the Greek for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. For there are set the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. The reign of the peace of Jerusalem, may they prosper and love you. Peace be within your walls, and tranquility within your palaces. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do you good. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen.
God before us, you beckon us to follow. God behind us, you send us in your name. God beside us, you are with us on our journey. Teach us to recognize you in the calling of the stranger, in the prompting of the spirit, and in the companions on the way. That your name may be glorified and your kingdom come. In the name of Christ, Amen. Amen. At this service of thanksgiving and prayer for the unity of the church here, we have come together to... We have come together to celebrate another step on our journey of ecumenical partnership, to give thanks and to say publicly in our declaration of intent, we want to work together to realize more deeply our common life and mission. Let me congratulate the leaders of the churches here for their friendship and cooperation and their commitment to ecumenical cooperation and partnership. We do not see this declaration of intent as an end in itself, but as a means to an end. Our efforts to unity must have a sense of purpose, a sense of meaning, a sense of what it does mean to be Christian today in this part of the world and in Britain. Jesus prays in John 17 verse 21 that they may be one so that the world may believe. And St. Paul in Romans chapter 12 verse 5 says, we who are many form one body in Christ and individually we are members of one another. Therefore, the essential purpose of unity must be mission. This has been the journey of the modern ecumenical movement since the special conference in 1910, the International Missionary Conference in Edinburgh, and that led to the creation of the World Council of Churches, our National Council of Churches, our local and district councils of churches, and many other varieties of cooperation in the ecumenical movement of today. But today, at this service, in this place, and at this time, we are witnesses to another model of ecumenical unity and cooperation. And it says in the Declaration, to seek out every possible opportunity for joint ventures and initiatives in mission for all the people. At the same time, we affirm our intention to pray and to work with our fellow Christians for the visible unity of the church so that people may be led to love and serve God more and more. Our efforts of unity cannot just be a dream, a wishful hope. It must be a commitment, not just of our leaders, but of us throughout the church, particularly in every congregation and pew, that we can, we will, we must work together. Jesus said again, by this everyone will know you are my disciples because you love one another. Today's celebration of unity and commitment, a commitment for mission, is not uni unity for uniformity. Unity not in an end in itself. And our effort for unity must not take so much of our time, energy and effort of trying to work out structures and systems of coming together that we are of no earthly use to the people of Cornwall and elsewhere. Unity must have purpose. We are called together in mission to witness to a gospel that must be good news, that must 
transform lives and community that must inspire and challenge our members and the wider community to understand what God is doing for us at this time and in this place. Jesus called, empowered, and commissioned his disciples in chapter 9, verse 2 of St. Luke. He says, go out, preach the kingdom of God, and heal. And he says, again, in Luke, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses to the end of the earth. We are called to be witnesses. Witnesses to the love, the commitment, the peace, the inclusiveness, the justice of the gospel. We are called to be agents of healing in a broken world. We are called to be the people, the agents who can bring that love of Jesus, the abundant life, a reality for all people. But mission and witnessing must always be contextual. Let me suggest some of the issues we can deal with here in Cornwall. And you probably know this better than I. The President and myself had a chance to visit Cornwall about a month ago. We were taken to Bugle, a rural community in the Clay County, where we saw poverty, deprivation, and exclusion. Cornwall is considered one of the poorest areas of the United Kingdom, with a GDP that is 62% of the national average. And this poverty is a real reality in parts of Cornwall. Rural poverty exists. And in Cornwall there is disparity too, because there's inequality between people who are very rich and people who are very poor. That is a challenge the churches together can face. Another thing that we saw as we traveled in Cornwall, we were taken to the unit skate park, where a large number of young people in Boston came together to skate and to have fun and to worship occasionally, but to come together to get meaning in their lives. And we know that young people are searching, not just for material well-being, but spiritual well-being. What does the church offer? young people who may not want to come into the structures and institutions of our church. What can our unity offer them? Let's look at the three passages that are taken from the New Testament. The first passage from 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 8. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. We are reminded by St. Paul as he writes to his chosen successor, Timothy, do not be ashamed of the law. Do not be ashamed of the gospel. Do not be ashamed of speaking out. What we need to understand from this is that we who are leaders and we who are members of the churches need to have the confidence to share our faith, need to have a confidence that we can talk to people outside our churches and not only amongst ourselves. Timothy is told to stand firm, overcome shame, ashamed, and hold fast to the faith. We must equip our members to be confident, to be mission agents, and to be people who could witness to the gospel. We need to build up the next generation of leaders of the churches here and elsewhere. We need to build up people who can speak with authority and confidence, but more importantly, with passion and feeling that they have witnessed what Jesus has done to them in their lives. Second passage, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. You are the salt of the earth. Followers of Jesus have chosen to be disciples. And in coming together as disciples, we choose the values, the vision, and the ways of the kingdom. We choose to be agents of change. We choose to be like salt, to permeate, to preserve, to purify, and to season society. 
so that the values of the kingdom may go throughout society, so that what we believe can become part and parcel of the community and society we live in. We can be agents of a more just, inclusive, healthy, and sustainable community. We are reminded too in that short passage where Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount talks after the Beatitudes to his disciples, challenging them to be the salt, that if we lose our purpose, they're worthless. That salt can be trampled, that salt is not worthy to be called the salt. As Christians, we must maintain our unique place in our communities. Being the salt of the earth means having a clear and meaningful purpose in life that transforms other people's lives, that challenges people and society and the structures of society to be changed. We are called to be the salt. But the third passage asks us to be the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father. Christians are asked to be the light. The light that shines to the Father and reflects the glory of the Father. Now, light is about exposing the darkness, enabling transparency, and not allowing anything to be hidden away. Lamps are not placed somewhere that nobody sees them. Lamps are placed on the top of a city or in a lampstand so that it can help others to see and be directed to God. Lamps and lights in those days give up some of their energy, some of themselves, so that others can benefit from this light. And we too must be prepared to give this up. By our words, by our deeds, we as disciples can influence this world. This cannot be escape notice. It cannot be that we as Christians do not get involved in the problems of the wider society. We are challenged by our Lord to go to the world, preach the kingdom, and to heal. The metaphors of salt and light are active metaphors. They are about being involved, about doing, about changing, about challenging, about inspiring, and about transforming this world. So let us work for unity for our churches here that will make difference to people outside. Let us work for unity that is about diversity in our ways of worship, in our working, ways of working, and in our worship. And yet the world must believe that our coming together must be of value to others. And that coming together can be done in our shared witness, our shared beliefs, our shared ways and practices that are coming together in mission can make a difference in this world. We have chosen to stand together today. What will people say of us a year from now, 10 years from now? What difference will this make for us? We are not called in our coming together to build our denominations, our church, local churches, or even our pet projects or our pet programs. We are called together in unity and friendship and fellowship to be, build the kingdom of God. We are Christians first. And our coming together as Christians is to bear witness to the fruits of our unity. Now, our ecumenical commitment cannot only be about Christians coming together. Ecumenical is a word that covers the whole household, the whole economy of God. And therefore, all of humanity, every human being, irrespective of their religion, their faith, their, their customs, their traditions, their gender, their background, are all children of God, all made in God's image. And therefore, our unity must be about a common humanity and an understanding about the integrity of creation and all that God has put at our disposal. Unity is not just for the church. Unity is for the whole people throughout this world. Can we work together for peace, for justice, for harmony, and for the dignity of all human beings? 
so that we can graduate again the churches for their coming together and remind them at this time of coming together. You have chosen to be witnesses to a gospel that is good news. You are challenged to share your faith and not to be ashamed of it, to be witnesses to the Lord and to equip your members as disciples. You are asked to be the salt of the earth so that you can permeate society and help make a difference in it. And you are called to be the light of the world so that others may see the good deeds that you do and meet God. Today is not just a day of celebration and commitment. Today is an opportunity for us as Christians here and throughout the world to show to the world that our differences, while important to some of us, are not the things we may dwell on. That our differences can be overcome as we as Christians in a society and a nation like ours witness to the love of our Lord. So may I close with the words of St. Paul. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and the Father, Lord Jesus Christ. Go in peace, go in unity, may God bless you in Cornwall, and may your light shine for the rest of Britain. Your model be an example for us to follow. And may God bless you in your unity. Amen. who are in the relay at the Shire Hall and the Town Hall, a lot of us, and we're not all here as Christians in Cornwall. Christ is our hope. We give him glory for the great grace by which upon the cross he stretched out his hands in love to us all. By that same grace may he come our risen saviour into every gesture of unity and fellowship which we make forward towards one another and make the peace we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another the sign of peace.
Let us pray that Christ may be seen in the life of the church. You have called us into the family of those who are the children of God. May our love for our brothers and sisters in Christ be strengthened by your grace. so that our lives will reflect your holiness. You have called us to be a light to the world, so that those in darkness come to you. May our lives shine as a witness to the saving grace you have given for all. You have called us to be members of your body, so that when one suffers, all suffer together. We ask for your comfort and healing power to bring hope to those in distress. You have called us to be the bride, where you, Lord, are the bridegroom. Prepare us for the wedding feast, where we will be united with you forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant it the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you are alive and reign with the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. United in heart and mind, let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we share with others in the leadership of Christian ministry and mission in the church in Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly, let us pray together for grace to fulfil the task to which we have been called and to which we have this day committed ourselves and the churches we represent. God of power and love, by your Holy Spirit, draw the scattered flock of Christ into a visible unity, and make your church a sign of hope to our divided world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As part of God's church here in Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly, I call upon you to live out the unity to which you have been called. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, will you dare to walk into God's future, trusting Him to be your guide? By the Spirit's power, we Will you dare to embrace each other and grow together in love? We 
Will you dare to share your riches in common and minister to each other in need? Will you dare to pray for each other until your hearts beat with the longings of God? We will. Will you dare to carry the light of Christ into the world's dark places? We will. So let us commit ourselves afresh to God and to one another as we say together, God our Father, in the name of Christ, and in the power of the Spirit, we commit ourselves to you and to one another, to live and work and pray as one body in Christ, to do a part of our life which we can do together, and to do together what we cannot do apart. Give us vision, give us courage, and give us joy, that the world may believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, to your eternal This is the message we have heard from the beginning. That we should love one another. There is no fear in love. But the perfect love casts out all fear. May, May God, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons in one God, inspire you to live as one, that, that you may witness to the perfect unity of his love and the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. <laughs>